Amanda with Street Smile Solutions, streetsmilesolutions.com, and today we're going to talk about the functional matrix theory, and I know you're like, oh no, boring, growth and development, dental school, not interested. Um, but I really can't make enough videos on this topic because you as a dentist need to understand how this works, how this affects all your kiddo patients. Um, even if you're not seeing kiddos, you still should know. <laughs> so, because it's, it's basically standard of care. So let me tell you what that is again, because even I had to get a refresh on it. So the functional matrix theory was invented or um, hypothesized by Melvin Moss, and this was back in 1962. And basically it's a phenomenal description of bone growth. And what he said, and this is his quote, the origin, development, and maintenance of all skeletal units are secondary, compensatory, and mechanically obligatory responses to temporarily and operationally prior demands of the related functional matrices. So basically what they're saying in a, in a before they were thinking that everything was genetic, right? The way our bones grow, whether we have a small jaw, big jaw, um, long jaw, you know, um, et cetera, narrow jaw, um, wide jaw, is fully genetic. Okay, and there's nothing that our environment could do. That was the original theory before 1962. Then um, what Dr. Moss realized is that the environment does play a factor. There's a partial factor by genetics and a partial factor by environment um, with any type of bony growth. And I mean, that's true. I mean, look at, for example, think about Chinese feet. You know, when they used to do foot binding, they, people would have a, normally your feet would grow to a certain size unless there was some type of environmental factor that prevented it from doing what it was supposed to do per the genetics, okay? So this totally plays into orthodontics 100% and dentistry and airway. Remember the palate, the top, of, the top of the mouth is the floor of the nose. So if the tongue, so we're breastfeeding here, if the tongue doesn't stay in the right position where it's supposed to be as an infant, even in utero, as an infant, as a small child up to age three, four, or five, but starting as a baby, because the child isn't feeding properly then, or has habits, the face does not grow properly. And yes, with orthodontics, we can make some modifications if the patient comes in early, if before puberty has finished, um, but it's a heck of a lot easier just to fix things when they're little it's so much easier. And I think so few parents are aware of how the functional matrix theory works and how this will affect their child. And you, as any type of dentist, needs to, anytime you have a kid come in, needs to be saying this. See, see it, say it, you know? I see my friends on Facebook all the time with kiddos, and they're not dentists, they're not in the healthcare, and I'm just looking at these oral habits that they have in these photos, and I'm dying. I'm dying, you know, and I, I let them know. I mean, I send them a message. I'm like, hey, look, you got to get your kid to an orthodontist. I'm so sorry. I don't want to be the one that tells you this. You know, you live in another country. I actually did this recently with one friend of mine, and she was not happy. Um, you know, we're not super close friends, but we're Facebook friends. But I mean, I was just watching the child's face. It was about maybe six or seven, grow down and drown, and the open bite getting bigger and bigger in the photos. And I'm, I'm horrified. And I said, look, I, I don't want to be one to tell you this, but I think your child might have airway issues. You know, please, please, please get your child to an ENT, to an orthodontist. Don't just go to one person. Uh, I'm quite sure your child has airway issues, I basically said, or, you know, or habits, or one of those. And we need to get this fixed, like ASAP. So um, I said, I, I, it's bothering me. Every time I see a picture, I just got to let you know. And I, you know, I wouldn't be a friend if I didn't tell you that. So um, yeah, I mean, that's pretty much it. Remember, tongue position. Tongue should always, even in a baby, and even a kiddo, should be on the roof of the mouth, behind the front teeth, not on the front teeth, and should be resting there at all times. Hard to tell in a kid, right? But if you're seeing, if the kid is only bottle feeding, I mean, you're probably going to have an issue, you know, especially even worse if they're doing pacifiers, past a few months. Even worse if they're doing thongs, fingers, stuffed animals in their mouth, anything that goes in their mouth besides food. And if you're doing sippy cups, you know, past age six, seven, eight months, same thing. All these things will affect the growth and development of the child. Again, easily reversible if you catch it early. Um, there's all kinds of appliances. They can tooth pillows. They can start sleeping with at night. Of course, habit cessation devices. You can start those at 18 months, two years. So I just really, really wanted to remind you how this works 
and have you feel comfortable with basically explaining this in a scientific way to every single one of your parent patients. Um, and, and yeah, I mean, really, you can even do a growth and development screening on all one and two year olds in your practice, three, four, five. Um, we're not calling this an orthodontic exam, we're calling it a growth of facial growth and development exam. Um, and just try to nip some habits in the bud as early as possible. You can offer these procedures to parents um, for the most part. I mean, most will be, will be appreciative and some might be not appreciative, but you know what, you've done your job, you've done what you need to do, that's standard of care, you note it in the chart and then they come back in a year or six months, you revisit it each time. And that's the main thing, you can only do what you can do. So, all right, thanks so much. Hopefully I created some awareness.